Hello there, welcome to this video in which we're going to write a song which would be good enough to go into the Great American Songbook. Now I don't necessarily mean that the one I'm going to write now is, but it's just a bit of a theme for you to play with because I'd like you to be able to master and drill the main jazz chord progression which appears in 90% at least of the Great American Songbook uh, repertoire and that is the one six two five one, often moving up a fourth and doing what I call floating two five ones, where you do a two five one, but the one is not the root, not the key of the piece. It's a note from the major scale. Uh, so I'll give you an example of that in this piece. Nothing's prepared, it's spontaneous. So the kind of exercise is to kind of become Cole Porter for a day, hence the title. And uh, I mean, you can by all means write down some lyrics with it and write down the actual melody exactly. Um, but I think it's gonna be, it's gonna be very, very helpful to help master this standard chord progression which will then enable you to play a lot of the jazz repertoire very very easily because you've drilled that that also important one six two five one up a fourth floating two five one onto something often the second the third the fourth the sixth could be the minor happens all the time and i just think that making your own little piece up for that is, is something quite useful so as always let's try like comment subscription as well as welcome have a look at my video management website waterpeanism syllabus and past patreon all the links and goodies are below so, I'm just going to spontaneously choose a key. I'm not going to write anything, so don't look for any lead sheets. This is about doing it in your mind so that you can master the chord progression in your mind. It's so important. So, I'm just going to choose a key like F. There are five common keys, I like to say, of jazz repertoire. C, F, G, E flat, B flat. Uh, I'll choose F for this, which gives us that one B flat. And uh, I'm going to base the first part of this song. I'm not necessarily going to count exactly the bars. But I could if I wanted to, maybe you will. I just want to give you the general skeleton, the general idea to give you something to do because it's going to help you a lot with your jazz stuff and you can use it to improvise as well. So I'm going to use the 16251 and we'll see where it goes from there. I have no idea about the melody, but let's just see what happens. I also have no idea about the rhythm. So this could be done as a waltz, it could be done as bossa nova, it could be done as swing, slow or fast, shuffle, ragtime, anything. That, that comes maybe after. This is just an experiment. So... Let's just first of all get down the one six two five one progression in the key of F. By all means, master them in the other keys, in the other keys, because you can't get away from knowing them in all the keys. So it's going to be one six D seven two G minus seven five C seven. But you can make the six a bit more interesting. Often in jazz, the six is played as a major third, like I did in modal theory. It's a minor. I have a video on all that stuff. But it's nice to play it as a major third because it sounds a bit sort of happier. And what I was just going to say there is that if you play a flat 9, 8, 9 flattened, and remove the root, you actually get a semitone ups, whole diminished. So in the key of F, if you go up a whole, up to the upper semitone to the flat second, play it's whole diminished. That is a kind of hidden 6 with a major third and a flat 9. If you want to mess around with that in other keys to get your head around it, I recommend doing that. Let me just do one example in the key of C, keep it simple. That would be going up, it would be up to 6, which is A. If we put the flat 9, that would be B flat. If we remove the root, we get C sharp, hold the minus, which is a semitone up, a flat second from the master key. So you can do it in any key. In the key of G, you go up and it would be A flat, hold the minus, the same logic. Um, so, I think I might do that one because I like the hold the minus sound. And then we go to the 2. Here I'm playing a 9 with my ring finger because 9s like minor 7s, minor 7s like 9s. And then 5 is C7, but we might play a sharp 9, get that blue sound, or the flat 9, the softer sound. We could even play a sharp 5, get that nice sound as well. You could call it a flat 13 if you played it up here with a, a 9. Anyway, it gets a bit deep, but that's the idea. So just get used to that 1, 6, on the flat second hold diminished, 2, 5, one. And then we'll go from there and see what it is. Now, now a melody. Let's just see what melody comes out. This is kind of an improvisation, but it's composed. It's going to be, it's going to be remembered and played all the time. Uh, so let's just see kind of what, what happens. I'm just going to play it in a simple kind of way like this. Maybe I'll do it with uh, two beats per chord. Just to give it a bit of momentum. So let's just see where I want to start. So at the moment, I'm kind of looking at a D. A D is sticking out to me there. D to the C, that, so you can learn it in numbers as well, so maybe I should really say 6, 5, you know, 3, 2, or call it 9. So let's see what happens. So, so that's, that's the first part. You could put lyrics to this as well, maybe. I won't, but you could. Let's just go back to the A, because that's in the chord. And maybe we could repeat that pattern as a symmetrical pattern. 
and then maybe go again. But we're going to get different note values because we're in different chords, in different keys. The chords are in different keys, so 6, 5, 3, 2 or 9. Now technically that's minor because we're on F sharp now. We can, okay, fine. I was going to say you can call it 5 if you want to think about it as being the 6th. But let's call it the minor because that's the actual chord we're playing. And then again it would be this time in the key of G. 5, 11, 8, 9, 10, 11. Which is nice. 11's like minor 7's. Minor 7's are like 11's. Over the 9. We've got a really nice sweet jazz chords extensions here. Now if we play the A, that's going to be a 13. So this is, this is what it's like to become Cole Porter for a day. Uh, a lot of the jazz repertoire, the melody highlights interesting note values. Interesting point. So, and then we might repeat it. But maybe let's go up this time. I can imagine it going up. So it, that would be, maybe let's just do something like that. Let's not have the 11. Right, there is 11 actually. Oh yeah, exactly, same, same notes. <laughs> but up here, so first time. By all means learn this song, if you want to. I can encourage you to write your own. Now what can we do here, just to make it a tiny bit different, maybe we just come back here. Maybe up to that sharp nine. Oh up to that sharp nine, which gives it that nice blues sound. So that's quite nice. Let's just give it a bit of a left hand going here. And I'll play the chord, I'll play the melody with a bit more of the chord filled in. So let's just imagine that we're playing a, um, imagine that there's a, this is a melody with lyrics. Oh no, then it goes. Exactly. Now, the next part, let's do a floating, and this happens often, a floating 2-5-1, where? Let's just think about it. We're on this note at the moment. Now, if we do a 2-5-1 onto B flat, that's a fourth up. That happens very, very often. So let's do that, and that's quite helpful because we're on this at the moment. It's a sharp nine because there's a flat seven involved. It's a dominant seven chord type. But if this becomes a two of B flat, because we're going to do a 2-5-1 into B flat, that changes its name from being sharp nine, because you can't play a sharp nine with a minor, because it's the same note. So that now becomes the two of B flat minor seven. It's a floating two, five, one onto the four. So the five is of course F seven, because it's a five of B flat, where we're going, the temporary one, the floating one. Down to B flat major seven, and then often what happens is it goes up a fourth, so that would go up to E flat. And when you go up to a fourth that in that way, it's always quite nice to have a sharp 11 it just gives it a kind of like, it's like a stop and then it comes down again, it's quite interesting, you'll see. I don't know what the melody is, but that just sounds nice. Maybe we could even put that melody in it, because it's got the uh, sharp 11 and a 3, which is safe. So, f from the s second time round, going on to that minor, I don't know what the melody is, but this is the experiment. Oh, up here. So I'm mixing myself up. <laughs> on the d second time round. touching on the sharp five there because it's kind of my style to do that. Uh, now it's going to become minor so the, maybe the melody could stay on the E flat because that seems to be the motif that we're following that kind of bomb 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 bomb. So why not just do it a bit here. So what note values will that give us? Minor, nine, root, thirteen. It's my least favorite chord the minor thirteen but it's the 13 works with minors, minors except the 13. So that kind of gives us some nice jazz sounds. Nine, minor 9, minor 13. So, how did I do that? Oh, right, okay. Now that's going to be the 5 in F. So maybe we can make it a bit more interesting and maybe go up to a C sharp to get that raised 5. That could be quite a melodic thing. Uh, so let's just see how we go into that. In that way, or we could go up in that way. Maybe that's a bit more gentle. Okay, now it would be quite nice to go on to the third of that B flat, but I want to make it a bit more interesting. So let's maybe go unexpectedly somewhere else, maybe down to the 13 or something, and get that major 13 sound. So. So 
let's just do that. So two, five, down to the one, but playing the 13 note. Highlighting that A, because we're going to come back to it again and go like that to get that sharp 11. So it's a bit of sort of parallel motion again, a bit of symmetry, like that, and then like that. So I think that's quite nice. But I might fix the beginning actually, because although it did go up there, I'm not quite over keen on that. So maybe we'll just keep it the same and just do it twice here instead of going up there. Maybe that's more of an ornament than a melody change. already uh, so I can't remember how it's gone oh, that was like that wasn't it I think that's quite nice I think now I can just drill that again oh, okay that's what it was no I think that's quite nice now what happens after you've gone up that you've gone up a fourth by a floating two five one then you've gone up another four again now what often happens is you'll go to a three so that would be a now you can play it with a minor well, you can play it with a flat five but let's just keep it on the on the minor seven here regular three that's going to go to a six that's going to go to a two it's going to go to a five it's going to go to a one we're going to keep it simple but a lot of the jazz repertoire does do that now we could also write a section c but uh, we, how could we call that section c Maybe it will be a section C, but uh, let's just keep it like this for now. So, okay, twice. Okay, well it goes up, doesn't it? Onto the C minor seven. A G. So major seven six or thirteen. That's the thirteen down to the sharp eleven. So really jazz things here. Now, uh, we're going to go on to the A, and it's going to be two beats, so it's going to be A minor 9, perhaps. To a D9, and then G minor 7, and a 9, and then C7. I'm not playing a melody here, I'm just playing the chords. So, uh, now what could we do the melody? Because we seem to be following the same motif, so maybe we could start on the 9 here and go... Something like that, maybe. Uh, I'm trying to imagine it's being sung as a song. Onto the nine, I think. Maybe like that to get that sharp nine in, or even, yeah, that one. Down to the sharp nine again. So let me just see if I can drill that again. start again. Oh, it's a D, isn't it? Yes. How many times am I doing that? Okay, twice. Okay. Now we're go around it again so it's kind of just a cute little song there um, now you can of course refine that make the chords a bit nicer maybe after the 251 onto B flat uh, you can, and when you go up to E flat uh, you could go somewhere else you could suddenly do another 251 into another key you might suddenly go down to B, I don't know, B minor 7 and then you can go to E7 flat 5 and something onto A uh, you could get onto the A that way you know you can add, add layers of course and of course if you do a section C uh, you might even go into another key. You may go into the key of G afterwards, uh, by all means personalised. But the whole point of this little exercise is for you to just come up with a very simple little melody, a very cutesy little song, and uh, it's helping you to drill that jazz concept of one six two five one up a fourth via a floating two five one as we did C F to B flat. 
and then up a fourth again to E flat. Happens in all the jazz songs almost. And then you're back to a three, six, two, five, one. Now, of course, you could transpose this into any other key. If you take the note values and do that in a different key, that wouldn't be hard to do at all. A nice bit of practice if you wanted. But hopefully you'll have a lot of practice with that. And it'd be really great if you've made it this far that you might want to share your progress. Just record it, upload it somewhere and put it in a comment below. Um, I do actually have a playlist. Uh, I call it the Water Pianist's um, Progress Playlist where I allow people... Look, there's not too many videos in it right now because I don't push it enough. But uh, you might enjoy having a look at that link below where you can post your progress and performances. And that's just a nice way to get a bit of a community going and you know, to encourage each other, which is always important. Um, so there you go, we've just got that nice little song, of course it could be developed, uh, played in different rhythms, different styles and all that kind of thing. Uh, and hopefully you've enjoyed the idea and you'll find it beneficial in your own sweet way. So uh, as always, like, comment, subscribe, as well as welcome. Have a look at my video management website, Waterpinism, Syllabus, and Patreon, and I'll see you in the next video. All the best, and bye for now.